Hi there. I'm sure you remember this. I made this question like some days ago, a few days ago, uh, regarding the elastics. What is the best design of the elastic to use in a situation like this? I want, I'm, I'm trying to close the anterior open bite and uh, I want to use elastic for that. Now I'm assuming that I can do the extrusion of anterior teeth. Of course, if I'm uh, considering all the aspects that involve the anterior open bite, I should see the relationship between upper lip and the incisor, upper incisor tips. Uh, I should see the facial pattern. Many things are very important in the decision of making how about to close the bite. For sure, this is very important, but now I'm considering just the design of the elastics. Why I'm asking this? Because most of the time when I see this kind of thing in internet, in the social media, well, people think that we need to put the elastic in the anterior segment, but is that really the best option for that? So would, what would be the best elastic configuration to close the anterior open bite, of course, considering that we can use elastic for that. And I put two options here. The, the first one, I'm placing the elastic in the anterior segment. You can use like this. Uh, here, I should use um, an ostrich elastic. I should use for this uh, five, uh, 16 elastic, light elastics. It depends on the force that I want to put, of course but there are some options here and some different configurations also. In this case, anterior elastics, not posterior. And the second option would be just, uh, just putting the elastic in the posterior segment without putting the elastic in the anterior segment. What is the best option for us? Well, let's see. If I put the elastic like this, what's gonna be the side effects in each case? First option, I have anterior elastic. And as you can see here, from this point on, I have an anterior open bite. And here we have good contact. So we have two, actually two steps. The posterior step from first premolar, first premolar uh, to second molar. And the other step is from K9 to K9, a higher step. And uh, here it's one option I can use a stainless steel arch wire, heavy, thick stainless steel arch wire, rectangular, uh, uh, for example, here, 1925 or 1725. And in the upper arch, I'm using a thin arch wire for that, night type uh, 014 or something like this, 012. Uh, and it's very, very thin. What's going to happen the moment I put the elastic like this? Yes, I will have this, the effect that I want, which is the extrusive effect on anterior upper segment because I want to go down, because I want to increase the relationship between the upper incisors and upper lip. And I'm using the elastic like this. Good effect, extrusive effect, but I also have another side effect here because the posterior segment is now the anchorage for the anterior segment. And in the posterior segment, I have one vector that's up. I mean, I, of course, I have other vectors. I have other effects. I have moments and everything. But let's consider just now the vertical effect. I have intrusive side effect on the posterior segment, which I don't want. And I have the effect that I want, the extrusive in anterior. With time, what I'll have is something like this. The posterior segment, which was very good position, good intercuspation, now it's not anymore. So is it a good option for us to use? And you, additionally, you need to consider that we don't need much force in the anterior segment. We don't need a higher force here. Just a low force is enough to do the extrusion. And for that, I don't need to put the elastics. Why not? Because I can use something like this. The concept here is to keep posterior segment in position. Remember, I have contact. It won't extrude posterior segments since I have contact between upper and lower. So how those a posterior teeth will erupt? They can because they are already contacting. Okay, we don't have space to have the eruption. And in this case, you don't need to be afraid. Just posterior elastics will keep 
the posterior segment in position without rotating the occlusal plane. And let's see how it goes. We have the effect that we want if we consider that eventually the, the uh, night eye arch wire goes to its original shape, meaning straight. And now I have the very slow force that I want in the anterior segment without, because now I have the posterior less, without the side effect that I didn't want. Remember, extrusive in anterior, good, intrusive in posterior, bad. So I don't want to have that. And in this case, I just need to wait and it's very quick and we don't need, again, force for that. The first eruption that we are applying here, the concept is slow eruption, not fast eruption. We want the periodontal apparatus to go together with the movement of the teeth until your teeth. So we want the periodontal, uh, periodontal apparatus to follow the movement. In this case, the only way to that 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 it will happen is when we apply low force, low magnitude of force. Remember that we don't need much force in the anterior segment. So let's see this case, for example. This is a case treated in one of our courses. And as you can see, there is a mistake in this photograph here, which is the day I put the braces up, I need to put the braces in the lower arch also. Why is that? Because since day one, I need to apply the vertical elastics to avoid extrusion of posterior segments. So as you can see here, we will have the force that we want to extrude the anterior segment, but we also have a very bad side effect that will remove the contact in posterior segment, which was very good. So now we have good and bad side effects. The problem here is we don't have the posterior bracket in position, the lower arch, to keep the, the, the bite closed. And as you are going to see now, yes, you can use this. This is important. People use like this. Yes, you can. But there's one thing that you must consider here. First of all, page, you lose uh, uh, cooperation when you put anterior less. Patients don't want to use that. Another thing important here is that the papilla that are going to be compressed in a, like this kind of uh, design sometimes will harm your patient's gingiva and they will release the elastic. They will, uh, they will not wear the elastic properly. And so this is something that I usually don't want to do. I usually avoid doing this. So in this case here, what I want, extrusion of anterior, not extrusion of anterior without intrusion of posterior. So the wrong thing here was this. Let's see how it goes. So you see, good intercuspation. And after that, well, we, lo we lost intercuspation. Very bad, very bad. So there is a mistake in this, this treatment and I want to call your attention about. Avoid doing this. Not a good option, not a good option at all. So here we have it. And now we'll have to struggle to go back with the old intercuspation, the anterior intercuspation that we had before and we lost because of our inability of understanding the side effects that we were uh, applying without knowing sometimes, okay? So here we have it. And after a while, we eventually uh, recover the previous situation with good intercuspation. So this is something for you to take into consideration when you are using elastics. We have many other aspects to consider. Of course we do, but the most important thing for us now is to understand that if we want a faster treatment, we need to avoid bad side effects. In all mechanics that we are proposing in our treatments, we have side effects. The trick is understanding the side effects and avoiding the bad side effects. Just sometimes we need we need to, to, to have that side effects, but most of the, the time we want to avoid them. Understanding them is the most important thing for us, okay? Here we have the end of the treatment. Patient uh, was referred to a cosmetic dentistry to do the anterior uh, uh, veneers, but never came back to us. So we have this situation. Here again, same thing. Well, we have the posterior segment 
in, in good position. And as you can see, just using posterior elastics, we can have the same effect, meaning extrusion of anterior. So if your patient is wearing elastics compliant enough, it will happen eventually without the need of placing anterior elastics, which is sometimes, which may, many patients won't wear because of the uh, aesthetic impact. The aesthetic impact is higher, okay? So we have it here. And of course, again, we see that we will have extrusion of anterior segment. And if it's allowed in our patient because of the re relationship, we have other aspects to consider, of course, but mainly because of the relationship between upper lip and upper tips of the incisors, okay? This, the tips of upper incisors. Here we have it. And that's it. I wanted to call your attention about this point. And now, if you want to know more about it, I prepared a class for you. I prepared a course uh, on anterior open bite. Let me explain why. So that's what I wanted to teach you who want to learn more about how to treat this problem, very common problem in our practice. That's it. This video is coming to an end. But first, I would like to review something that can help you a lot. If you are already an experienced orthodontist who has been seeing patients for some time, or if you are a beginner in this wonderful career, you must have already understood that the search for knowledge must always be part of our daily practice. This is extremely important both to learn new techniques and protocols and to improve our work method. After all, we deal every day with people who put their health in our hands. This is a huge responsibility. As healthcare professionals, we cannot make room for mistakes. And when we talk about anterior open bite, we have to be very careful because this is a problem that most orthodontists do not know how to solve. Why is that? The reason is very clear in my mind, because we just want to know how to apply a device to close the bite. We are not thinking about what the problem is. We are not understanding what we are doing with our patients. We are not understanding the problem itself because we may not be applying the right concept to understand how to deal with the problem, meaning diagnosis and treatment planning, and after that, to apply the right biomechanics. That's what I want to teach you. Everything I showed in this sequence of uh, webinars was just a small part of the process of solving this problem, the anterior open bite. There are other steps that involve orthogonatic surgery, uh, using TEDs for solving the anterior open bite. We have many other possibilities that I'm using in my daily practice and I want to teach you. Those are advanced topics that I would have liked to have studied at the beginning of my career. But since I had no mentor at that time to teach how to use this kind of uh, very advanced ways to treat the anterior open bite, I had to go in the hard path, making mistakes and frustrating myself several times until I finally developed my own protocol, which begins with very, very precise way to understand our patient. Since the beginning of our treatments, we need to understand how to see the problem, is it skeletal? Is it dental? What are the, the, the components of the problem? And this is what I'm going to solve, how I'm going to solve the problem, understanding where the problem is located and then applying the right biomechanics. The good news is you don't have to go through all of those, all those frustrations. I will detail this matter for you in an advanced course showing the best way to solve this kind of problem, the anterior open bite. And the sequence of classes here on YouTube will help you, but you need to go further. You need to go deeper. You learn about many topics that you won't see here. For example, the right biomechanics to apply the torque when you do the intrusion of anterior teeth using the retraction at the same time. What's the right torque for that? What if you don't apply the torque? So we have many, many answers that are in this course that can help you very much. As it is extremely in-depth content 
that you will hardly find elsewhere. I set a symbolic price for that of just $60, just to cover the cost of the producing the course and the publicity and everything and the professionals who are working with me. So I want to help you. And for that, I set this very low price. You will have access to this course for 60 days. And if you conclude that course and this content and it's below your expecta expectations, you will be 100% refound. Promise that. Zero risk for you. So if you want to learn or improve the resolution of the anterior open by problems in your clinic by performing these high level treatments for your patients, click on the link in the description of this video. I'll stop here. I hope I helped you in some way. See you later. Bye bye.